Hello, I'm Robert Kelly, and this is a Record All Monsters quick look at Luigi Cosi's Godzilla. From time to time, there will be curiosities, oddities, or tangentially related bits of media that may not fit into the main episode, but warrant a quick look in our history of giant monster movies. And Godzilla, as it's popularly known, is one such film. Luigi Cosi had seen Godzilla King of the Monsters as a child when it was released in Italy in July of 1957, and it stuck with him. Twenty years later, after directing a few episodes of Italian genre film titan Dario Argento's TV show, Door into Darkness, as well as a few giallo films of his own, Cosi had been showing classic sci-fi movies at his own theater in a kind of festival series, and he decided he would like to show the original 1954 Japanese version of Godzilla. So he approached Toho's distribution office in Rome, who he had worked with on getting his most recent film, Take All of Me, released in Japan where it had been a respectable hit. Due to the international distribution deal Toho had worked out back in the 50s, only Terry Morse's American edit was available to Kazi. He wasn't thrilled, but he'd work with what he had. His Italian distributor wasn't thrilled either, but not for the same reason. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, was in black and white. And that may have flown back in the 50s, but this was the late 70s, man. Don't nobody want to see no black and white movie. So they gave him three weeks to colorize the film. Three weeks is not enough time to do anything well, especially not colorize a movie frame by frame, as the best version of this process is done. But he didn't want to merely tint the movie either. So a bizarre middle ground was reached. The film was tinted in different areas for each scene. So the night sky might be tinted purple, and the fiery foreground of burning buildings surrounding Godzilla would be red or orange. Other changes were made, too. Additional shots of real plane crashes and evacuations were added in to supplement the model-based effects footage, and a truly 1970s-style Italian opening sequence was added, with lively electronic music playing over actual footage of the aftermath of the Hiroshima bombing, including of people killed in the blast. Depending on who you ask, is either a modest hit or a modest flop, Toho approved all of his cuts, but on condition that ownership of the film and all of its components lapsed to them after seven years. Cozy's filmography looks pretty familiar to fans of cheap sci-fi and fantasy films of the late 70s and early 80s. The Star Wars knockoff, Star Crash. The Alien knockoff, Contamination. And two live-action Hercules movies starring Lou Ferrigno. This sticks out like a sore tie-dyed thumb, and if you really want to appreciate the care Joseph Levine and company took in importing Godzilla for Western audiences, that's the only reason I'd recommend checking out Kazi's version, except as a historical oddity. But I will give him his due. This is clearly a labor of love gone wrong, but a labor of love nonetheless. One that briefly brought Godzilla back to the big screen during his nine-year hiatus, and for that, at least, we should be more than a little grateful. <laughs>